Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. And I want to have a look at the mean anomaly, which is actually one of the orbital parameters. So if you're looking at setting up an orbit or learning or finding out about a particular orbit, you may have come across this term called the mean anomaly. And that's what we're actually going to have a look at in this video, what it is and how you might calculate it. So before we do that, let's revisit some other parameters or information about orbits in general. So this here is the pericenter of an elliptical orbit. Now the pericenter is the shortest distance between two objects on its orbit. So here we've got an elliptical orbit. I'm using the example kind of as a planet and a star. So the pericenter is when they get closest to each other. And then the opposite one will be on the other side, and that would be the apocenter. And that would be the furthest away that the two objects are. And with an elliptical orbit, the distance between the two objects changes during its orbit. For a circular orbit, then actually that remains constant along with the orbital velocity. So now that we've got that, the mean anomaly then is the fraction of an object's orbital period that has elapsed since the orbit or well, yeah, the orbiting body has essentially passed that pericenter. So once it's passed the pericenter, then the mean anomaly is essentially the fraction of that orbit, but it's the orbital period that has elapsed since the pericenter essentially. Okay. Now don't be confused with the position on an elliptical orbit. It's not the same thing. There's actually something else that you can use to calculate that, and that is not the mean anomaly. So this is actually just a fraction of the orbital period, as opposed to the position that it is on an elliptical orbit. Now with a circular orbit, those two would coincide actually. So what we've got here, we've got the pericenter again, which is on the right hand side, and it's past the pericenter. So the mean anomaly is essentially the angular position from that pericenter of an imaginary object, so it's not the actual object that's orbiting, it's an imaginary object on a circular orbit that has the same orbital period as your object that has an elliptical one. And the thing here is that a elliptical orbit and a circular orbit can have the same orbital period even with the same semi-major axis. Now, just because you make it more elliptical doesn't change the time it takes for it to do one orbital period. It changes its velocity during the orbit but the total time for one orbit is the same. So actually, the angular position then is quite useful. So for a circular orbit, then it's orbiting with a constant velocity. The area swept out inside of there is going to be the same. Actually, it'll be the same anyway. Um, so the rate of angular velocity its speed as it goes around doesn't change for a circular orbit. It's not changing in velocity and the same area is swept out over the same amount of time basically. And actually, to be honest, the same is true for a elliptical orbit as well, but because it changes its distance between the two objects, it means it has to speed up and slow down. So here, if you've got an elliptical orbit, so it's got some eccentricity there, then the same area is still going to be swept out over time this is one of Kepler's laws, uh, if you're familiar with those. But it means that during the pericenter, it's actually going to have a faster orbital period than it does on the other side, near the apocenter. So the orbital velocity changes during the orbit, but the total orbital period, or the time it takes to go all the way around, is still going to be the same as the equivalent circular orbit. So how do we actually calculate it then? Well, first we need to know the mean angular motion, or this is the rate of sweep that it's actually doing on its orbit. And this is denoted with n. And you can do that in radians or in degrees. So it could be two pi over t, or 360 degrees over t, where t is actually the orbital period or the time it takes to do one full orbit. And this is true for circular and elliptical orbits because it's the average, the mean angular motion. It's not the instantaneous angular motion, which for an elliptical orbit is going to change in time as it goes around. So now we've got that kind of that mean angular motion, we can then calculate the mean anomaly. So we've got that. And then in the brackets there, you've got the time 
since it passed the pericenter, and then you've also got the actual time that it was at the pericenter. So that difference in between the two is going to give you its position or its fraction of its orbital period, basically. So that then gives you the mean anomaly. Now you can do that in a different form. So you can calculate in this one here. If you know the eccentric anomaly and the eccentricity, so those, those relate to how elliptical the orbit is. If you know those, then you can actually calculate the mean anomaly as well using this particular function here. And then again, what you can do is you can go back to the first one and we can switch out this mean angular motion for essentially parameters relating to the actual body itself and the orbit. So if we know its mass, we know its semi-major axis, we can use the gravitational parameter and we can calculate it out using this particular one here. So there's a few different ways. There's actually more ways you can get the mean anomaly as well, but I thought I would just note these ones because these ones are ones you're most likely going to use, I suppose. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy or find these particularly helpful, then do consider becoming a member of the channel. There's extra videos in the member section as well as other benefits. And it also just generally helps support the channel and make these videos. So thank you for watching.